Joining us now is Connor Teske. He's Brookfield Renewable Power and Transition CEO, also president of Brookfield Asset Management. And if you don't know, that's a global alternative asset manager, about $925 billion in assets across renewables, infrastructure, real estate, credit, and, well, a lot more. Uh, Connor, great to have you. Would love to just start off on the subject of the day. You heard the Secretary of Transportation talking about infrastructure. You certainly are uh, financing and putting up a lot of, for example, elect electricity power generation. Uh, how much do you think about it? And give me your thoughts about today's outage as a result of this content upgrade, so to speak, from CrowdStrike. T today is a great example of our world is getting increasingly more digitized and, and more interconnected. And that is fueling a, a really major investment theme across our business, which is the huge amounts of capital flows that are going towards increasing the resiliency of supply chains, the onshoring of critical goods and services. This is an investment theme that we've been investing in for, for years at scale and one that we think ha has years to run going forward. A and shocks like today uh, really reinforce that point. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to talk about something we have been mentioning many times here on air, which is the growing need for increased electricity generation as a result of AI usage and, and the growth of data centers. You know, just put it in some perspective for our viewers. How much demand for power is there going to be as a result of the addition of AI around the world? What kind of numbers are we talking about that's going to be needed to help build the grid? So let's come at it from this perspective. Today, as Brookfield, as one of the largest owners of data centers around the world and one of the largest uh, owners and managers of, of renewable power generation, we have a unique vantage point into the, the capital flows and the growth opportunities in providing critical inputs as the largest tech companies around the world look to grow their AI and cloud service businesses. And the demand we are seeing is tremendous. Um, it's demonstrated by our transaction with Microsoft, where we'll look to invest $10 billion to build out low-cost, clean power for them, which will directly provide input and, and growth runway into data centers that will be used to, to grow their AI capabilities. And it, it's really the scale that, that should jump out. Um, we're seeing demand from tech companies for green power increasing at a run rate of about 50 percent a year right now. Yeah, well, a lot of those companies, such as Microsoft, have significant uh, carbon reduction targets. But I wonder, Connor, are they going to be able to not just meet those targets, but are you going to be able to and will the industry be able to meet the demand that is coming on, given it seems to be somewhat unprecedented in terms of the rates of growth over a short period of time? The, the important thing to recognize here is that the growth that we have seen in renewables over the last four or five years and, and the growth that will continue into the future is primarily driven by the fact that renewables are the cheapest form of bulk electricity production around the world. They are the cheapest way to produce a critical input that is increasingly growing in demand. The fact that the economic option is also the clean option just throws additional support uh, behind that growth trajectory. So we will continue to see as much renewables be built across global grids as possible because that's driving decarbonization, that's driving lower cost energy, that's driving energy security all at once. But the limitation is going to be things like grid connection and permitting. That being said, we continue to see the growth trajectory accelerate. 2024 will be bigger than 2023 and so on and so forth. So we do see the capital flows only going one direction.